Hey, so I love to cook at home, but my repertoire of go-to meals is quite narrow, mainly because I'm a student and I can't really afford to try anything too adventurous that needs lots of different ingredients. But as a generalization, pretty much everything I make has a base of carbs because carbs are filling and generally quite cheap. So whatever I'm having is usually paired with either potatoes, rice or pasta. No salads for me. Salads can be quite expensive to make from scratch if you're making a good salad and the ingredients don't last very long, which is a completely different issue. Anyways, so all these carbs, potatoes, rice and pasta and couscous need to be boiled. So I boil water every day. And up until very recently, I used to put salt into my pan of water, not just for flavor, mm -mm, but also because I was told many, many times from several different sources that salt makes water boil quicker. Therefore, you're using less energy when you cook. And if you are a carb loader like me, you know that if you put water in a pan, it seemingly takes forever to boil. And if you want it to boil faster, you just add some salt, right? But actually, if you think of the chemistry, if you add salt to water, you raise the water's boiling point or the temperature at which it will boil. Not by massive amounts, you would need a lot of salt to dramatically increase the boiling point, but it still does. And this all happens through something known as boiling point elevation. And it doesn't just happen with salt and water either. So it happens when you combine a non-volatile solute like salt with the solvent like water. It has the effect of raising the boiling point and this combination actually needs more heat, so more energy to start boiling in the first place compared to water alone. And the thing is, is that if you're raising the water's boiling point by adding salt, does that mean that you're making the water hotter and therefore that changes the question from does salt make water boil faster to will the food cook quicker? But that is all theory and in practice the amount of salt you add to your water for flavour purposes isn't actually enough to change the heat dynamics of the water. You would have to add 58 grams of salt to one litre of water to make half a degree hotter. And for reference, every litre of seawater contains 35 grams of salt. So your pot of pasta would have to be almost double the saltiness of seawater to boil just a mere half a degree hotter, which isn't going to have much an effect on anything really other than resulting in really gross pasta. But going back to the food budget thing, I do want to make a video soon for my other channel that doesn't have any videos on, I'm so sorry, um, on becoming more sustainable and financially savvy with the food that I buy, especially as a student. I feel like I waste a lot by not incorporating the same ingredients into several different meals throughout the week, um, or by not batch cooking and freezing. So I want to do that more of that, but I also want to budget more overall. I don't think that I'm necessarily bad with money, but I do want some financial advice because I can't work full time for the next four and a half years. I've tried to make an appointment with the university's financial advisor, but it's been hard matching their free appointments with my timetable. But in the meantime, I've started listening to audiobooks on budgeting on my commute to uni and to work. And an author that I really like is Erin Lowry, who wrote the book Brook Millennial. I found her audiobook on investing for newbies on Audible, and it's been really, really great so far. You'd be surprised how little you actually need to start investing. And luckily for us, Audible have given us all a free 30 day trial that includes a free audiobook and two free Audible originals. I especially love Audible as I can download audiobooks to my phone with their free app and listen to them even when I don't have any service on the underground. If you've also been thinking of starting investing but don't have a Scooby of where to start or didn't think that you even had enough to start investing at all, I would definitely recommend downloading Erin's audiobook but Audible does have thousands of other audiobooks to choose from and other things like podcasts. So head on over to audible.com forward slash science with Katie to get your free audiobook and audible originals or text science with Katie to 500 500. And that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, hit subscribe. A big thank you to my patrons on Patreon and thank you for watching. Bye!